the day that Terry Schiavo died, victim of a court order condemning the brain-damaged woman to death by thirst and starvation, Representative Tom DeLay of Texas did what few politicians have the courage to do these days. He spoke his mind. This loss happened because our legal system did not protect the people who need protection most. The time will come for the men responsible for this to answer for their behavior. Delay's strong language worried some Republicans. They pointed to an ABC News poll purporting to show that 63% of Americans wanted Mrs. Schiavo's feeding tube removed and that 70% wanted Congress to stay out of the matter. However, Tom DeLay does not take his guidance from polls. On the day that Mrs. Schiavo died, DeLay told reporters that congressional investigators will look at the arrogant and out-of-control judiciary that thumbs its nose at Congress and the President. He suggested that some judges involved in the Schiavo case might face impeachment. I never thought I would see the day when a U.S. judge stopped feeding a living American so that they took 14 days to die. Fainter hearts in the Republican Party cringed, yet the very next day, on April the 1st, pollster John Zogby released survey results showing that 79% of Americans opposed removing a feeding tube from someone in Terry Schiavo's condition. Only 9% would remove it. It turned out that ABC had used a push poll, a survey worded in such a way as to ensure a predetermined outcome. The ABC poll had misled respondents into thinking that Mrs. Schiavo had no consciousness and that her condition was irreversible. Delay had given voice to tens of millions of ordinary hard-working Americans whose opinions seldom reach mass media organizations nor the elite pollsters they employ. He spoke for an anguished but silent majority which recoiled in horror from Terry Schiavo's killing and from the runaway judicial system which had ordered it. Delay had given middle Americans more than just a voice. He had given them hope. From the Democrat point of view, that made Delay a very dangerous man. Tom's public profile began to rise fast. Between September 1999 and February 2005, the proportion of Americans who recognized Delay's name soared from 46 to 76 percent. Predictably, his rising stature had made him a priority target for dirty tricksters of the left. His ascent to House Majority Leader in January 2003 triggered an onslaught of non-stop mudslinging. Delay had endured a two-year barrage of nebulous, petty, and mostly ill-founded ethics charges, attack ads, media smear campaigns, and dubious popularity polls. Now here's the interesting thing. Mainstream media portrayed Delay's accusers as public interest groups, nonprofit organizations standing guard over public virtue, their judgment unsullied by corruption or party allegiance. In reality, of course, the public interest groups attacking Delay had roots in the partisan struggle as deep as any in Washington. Much evidence suggests that a hidden agenda lurked behind the camouflage of this sudden outpouring of ethics charges. In certain cases, the organizations promoting these charges showed a history and a money trail bespeaking a highly specific allegiance. The pattern of the attack ads, the attack campaigns, the smear campaign suggested that Delay may have been confronting a political machine far wealthier, more ruthless, and better skilled at media manipulation than the Democratic Party itself. When the hysteria subsided and the facts were examined, we learned that Delay's foe all along had been the shadow party 
a stealth network, a murky and inscrutable entity controlled by the left-wing billionaire George Soros, and his name is spelled S-O-R-O-S.